Please welcome uh, Zachary Lieberman. Hi, hello, bonjour. So, first of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to the Stereo Looks people for having us and for all of you for coming. It's really a pleasure and an honor to be here, and I'm super excited to talk to you about open frameworks and really for this community to come together. So it's a kind of you know it's a dream to be here. So I'm super excited. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about open frameworks, and then I'm going to talk to you about the, my own work and some stuff that I'm doing really recently. Um, so. Uh, quickly, the I, main idea or the goal behind Open Frameworks is to create this tool where you don't necessarily have to have a computer science degree. So in English we say CS, CS degree. The goal is to create this, this library, this tool where it, it, you don't really have to come from CS background to make crazy things. Um, and I teach, and one of the things that I really like to teach is that it's, it's not as hard as it looks. So when you see these projects, that we can take them apart and we can talk about how they're made and we can make new ones. And I, the, the goal is really to use this as a tool for making, but also a tool for teaching. We take these things and we share them with other people. So I'll show you some projects that are made with open frameworks. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Ah, okay. Ah, sorry, sorry. a little bit about the philosophy behind open frameworks is there's really these are the things that I think make up the open frameworks projects is simplicity intuitiveness distributed cross-platform powerful and extensible so I'm going to explain these words simplicity when we when I, when I think about open frameworks I think about it basically as a kind of set of building blocks it's these small pieces of code that we can reuse to build new things um, when you go to the bookstore, if you go to, you know, in, in America we have a bookstore that we, Barnes and Noble, we go to, and if you look in the computer section, there's tons and tons of books, right? If you look in C++, it's very overwhelming to see all of these books. And for us, it's really like, we don't, we try to create this thing where you don't need to read all of these books, but maybe just a couple. It's designed to be intuitive, so that to do a very basic thing like load a movie and play it and draw it, you know, it's just a few lines of code. It's not a lot of code. It's distributed, and it's really beautiful to see kind of how, if you look at this network diagram of how uh, Open Frameworks is created, there's like uh, so many contributors from around the world, people adding to and, and making this project. Um, you know, all of these people kind of be, be, being a part of this tool. It's cross-platform, which means it works in Windows and Mac and Linux and also on devices like iOS and Android and Raspberry Pi embedded devices. And now recently it's been working with MScript in, so it can also work in the browser, um, which is really exciting because you can have, you know, write open frameworks code and then see it in, in a browser. And then recently I got a browser working in open frameworks. So I had open frameworks working in the browser in open frameworks. And it's a bit like um, that movie Inception. So it had this kind of cool Inception quality. It's powerful um, and it's extensible. And one of the most exciting things about open frameworks is, are all of the add-ons. So we have this core set of code, but then people are writing all of these additional pieces of code that you know, when if there's a new device or a, a new library, people are writing wrappers that allow you to easily use them. And for, for me, that's one of the most exciting things, is to see all of this code that other people are writing. 
Um, and if you look at the actual lines of code, it's like 25 or now maybe 30 times the number of lines of code for add-ons versus the core of OF, which means that it's like 25 times the size. It's like a huge scale. In the open frameworks community, we're uh, really, really big advocates for the, this idea of making poems instead of demos. So usually when you think of technology, you think of a demo. Like it's like a cool, shiny thing. Like here's a cool use of technology. And we're really big advocates for poems, for poetry, for creating something that's maybe more, um, you know, kind of weird and esoteric. So I'm going to show you some projects that I think really re re represent kind of open frameworks and kind of important for the history. And this is a project that was created by um, Graffiti Research Lab, including my, my friend Theo Watson, who works with us on open frameworks. This project is called Laser Tag. And the idea is that it combines projectors, uh, camera, computer, and really bright, illegal lasers. Um, and you can point this at a building and you can make drawings. Um, and so the camera is tracking the green dot of the laser. And then the software is actually making a drawing based on the movement of the laser. Oh no, why is my video not playing? Oh no, what does that mean? Ah! Wow. Sorry, everybody. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the place is what you were, you were using there is uh, the, the letters laser, the means the light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to quit. Wow. Duplicate. Uh, uh, file doesn't exist. What does that even mean? Discard? Duplicate? <laughs> oh, none of my videos play. All right. All right. Well, I'll just use my words. Um, so one of the things that I find really beautiful about this project is that, you know, you go to the website and um, if you go to Vimeo or YouTube or Flickr or Instagram, every day you search for open frameworks, you see all of these great projects that people are making. And that's the kind of beautiful thing about making a tool is seeing the things that people make from it. Um, this is one of my favorite projects when I'm talking about the idea of poetry. This is by an art artist named Chris Sagru. And she's created this project called Delicate Boundaries. And it's basically a screen, a computer screen. And when you put your hand next to it, there are these bugs that are moving on the screen. And when you put your hand next to the screen, the bugs actually come off the screen onto your hand. And we always talk about artwork leaving the screen. And this is such a beautiful example of artwork actually coming off of the screen and, and interacting with your body. Um, oh, no, nothing plays. Uh, OK, I will describe it. So this is a project called Sniff. And it's a virtual dog where when you approach the window, the dog is following you. And as you move in front of the storefront, the dog kind of is attracted to you and then sometimes backs away. It's quite beautiful. It's created by an artist named Carolina, Carolina Sebeka. Um, we've been using open, open frameworks at a place called iBeam, which is an art science research center. Oh, what, okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try. Well, discard or duplicate? What does that even mean? Discard. Oh god. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
I understand it now. Okay. I understand it. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm an idiot. How do you say idiot in French? Idi idio? Idio. I'm an idio. Idio. Okay. Wow. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. Mm. Idio. Idio. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Oh no, keynote. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, god. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. Okay. Oh, this, this is not working out. All right, let's try this again. Done. Keynote, open recent, open frameworks. Looking for movies to convert. Cancel. Okay. All right. Oh, yay. Okay, now I can show you videos. Oh, maybe not. Oh. Okay, all right, well, uh, this is an augmented reality record. This is a project which I... Oh, okay, well... Uh, oh, yes, okay, so this is a project which I love. It's a video game called Lose Lose. And this video game is actually, the characters in this video game are based on files from your hard drive. So when you shoot them, it deletes the, that file on your hard drive. <laughs> and then when you d die, it deletes the game itself. So I like this game, it's called Lose Lose, so no matter what, you lose. Um, this is a... Hey, uh, this is Theo Wilson. Uh, uh, this is a little app I made this morning as a response to Todd Banton's uh, augmented reality record player. So Theo, who works with us on Open Framework, saw this augmented reality record, and he got all excited about it, so he made this app. So check it out. People ask, you know, why, why are you interested as an artist? Why, what, is, what intrigues you about open source? And why would you take this code and give it away to other people? And for me, I think a lot about this question. And my answer is that usually when you tell people that you're making art, they have this notion of, that they have, people have a kind of romantic notion of what it means to be an artist. So that an artist is somebody who's like working alone, it's a solitary genius who's misunderstood and wo working alone in an attic. And I think that we need to really fight against this notion. And I'm a big advocate of this idea that art is, is a kind of laboratory, it's a form of research. And that really what we're researching is the future, that we're developing or inventing you know, different possible futures. So there's a huge movement right now, this kind of DIY, do-it-yourself. And in the open frameworks community, we have this notion of DIWO, do it with others. And I, I like this idea of, like, we can do things, we can make things with, with other people. So I, this is a cartoon that I used to watch as a kid where everybody, like, comes together and then becomes a Voltron. Um, and it's really amazing to see this kind of open frameworks community grow. And I think if you have a community, you have, you have to have a gang sign. So we have this open frameworks gang sign. And I, I think everybody gets it, except for... Uh... She has trouble. 
And, uh, and we do all kinds of events where we try to come together and, and make things together. So this was at Ars Electronica. We created a laboratory. They said, you know, could you make something with open frameworks? And we said, let's make a laboratory. So we, we actually built out of scaffolding, we built a whole structure, a whole um, place. Uh, we had this idea of making a, la a research laboratory for the course of the festival that we built. Um, and it was quite nice to build this thing, like a physical construction out of, uh, out of scaffolding. And uh, so I see it come together, multiple la levels. And then we had our friend Taeyun Choi, who's a great artist, created the visuals for the outside of this structure. And the idea is that we basically hung out in here, and it was two floors. So on the first floor, you could see um, kind of photographs and documentation of what we made. And the idea here is that there was this whiteboard. So here you can see a kind of whiteboard where you can write notes on. And so people would write down ideas for us on the whiteboard, just using five words. They would just write down five words. And then they would take a photograph. We had this photo booth where you would take a photograph of yourself holding these five words. And then those five words would actually come up. We'd print it out, and there was a hole in the ceiling here where we'd, you'd pass the idea through. So on the ground floor, you kind of generate an idea, and then you pass it up to the second floor. And in the second floor, we had this kind of great laboratory. And there were security cameras, so you could see us working. You could kind of watch us. And on the second floor, we were hanging out, and we, we basically um, raided Ars Electronica. We stole all of their equipment and anything that we could find. We sort of grabbed it and put it in a room. And then we had these beanbag chairs, and there, there's the hole in the floor. So you actually w would, would fall asleep, and then an idea would come up, and then you'd wake up, and then you'd go jam and make something. Um, and we took this idea of research really seriously. We hung out, we made projects, we kind of jammed, we drank a lot of beer. And I think coding and drinking beer goes really well together. We wore, we, yeah, we wore um, lab coats, so we actually looked like um, we were in a research lab. And what I love is just the idea that if we are in the same space, the ideas can travel and, and share more easily. This is one of the projects. So we made um, dozens and dozens of projects. And this is one that I love, which is a Super Mario Brothers that you play with your body. So it was a lot of this kind of work, but I think the most important thing to say about Open Frameworks is that it's, it's, a, it's a tool, but it's also a community, and it's a really kind of welcoming and friendly community. Um, <laughs> let's see. Okay. All right, so I'm going to talk to you about some projects that I've been making recently with Open Frameworks. So I've worked as a media artist for a long time now. I think I showed a project here at Scopey Tone in 2007 or 2008, so I'm like, uh, I feel like a, not like a grandfather now. So, um, so I've done a lot of projects. I'm going to show you some recent stuff that I'm really excited about. So this is a tool that I made in the summertime called Inkspace. It's an Android app, so you can uh, run it on your phone. And it's basically a drawing tool where you can make a drawing on the phone, and then when you rotate the phone, the drawing rotates in, in 3D. making tools is you see, you know, I put this app out and then you see all of these drawings that people make and it's really fun to kind of watch what people make with the things that you've, you've made. Um, sometimes it's like really basic stuff like drawing faces and, you know, and so on. Sometimes it's really fun messages like <laughs> this kind of thing. And then sometimes it's really cool, like there's this artist who made these birds. She made this whole series of birds and it was really beautiful to see, like I could not imagine making it 
but you put the tool out there and then you see all of the things that people do. For me, that's really exciting. Um, another project that I was really have, had the pleasure to work on recently is the, called the School for Poetic Computation. And Sarah was a student recently at the school, um, and you can see the great work that she made there. But this is a school that we started in New York. And we recently had a commission to make an artwork for a music festival this December. And what we did is we um, designed a project, it's called Recoded, and it's inspired by another project called the Recode Project. But the basic idea is that we took five artists from the past and we studied their work and we recreated their work in using modern tools. So artists like Vera Molnar, um, James and John Whitney, Muriel Cooper, Rosa Mankman, and um, there's a fifth one. It will come to me. Um, so this is the School for Poetic Computation. We don't really have a fancy logo. Uh, but we hang out there, we make stuff, and, and the uh, exciting thing was actually kind of, for me, to take students from the school, to take them to another place. So we went to Houston, Texas, and we flew down, and we hung out, and all of the gear, when we got to the music festival, all of our stuff just said poetic on it. Somebody wrote the word poetic on, a, on tape, just to mark it as ours. And basically, it were two giant LED screens that we, um, our sketches were running on them. And so on the left side, you could see the code, and on the right side, you could see the result of the code. And this was really fun. We set this up. We had um, tons and tons of visitors. I'm going to show you just a quick video so you can see kind of what I mean by, by the code and the visuals. So the idea is that the room would be completely pitch dark, and then you would actually see the code being written, and then you would see the visual on the right side. And we really wanted to show how changes in the code affect the visuals. So we built a system where you could adjust a particular value, and then you could see that, that value changing in the visuals. And for non-programmers, it was quite nice to kind of meditate and see this very direct relationship between text and image. And it was also, for us, really you know, wonderful to study these artists and get to know their work and their ideas and try to bring them to a more modern audience. So we set this up and uh, exhibited this project. I love, the LED screens are so bright, so people actually wore sunglasses in the room. Um, and it was really kind of great to be, this is, I love this image, this is what it felt like. Um, and people were just sitting and hanging out. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited about this kind of projects. Uh, I'll show you a few more things that I've been working on. So really kind of small stuff. I've been thinking a lot about reflection. So I started with some sketches. We're really just talking to a student. And um, the student was thinking about circles. And this is a sketch that I coded for them, which is drawing a circle with a very simple idea, which is if you take a line from one side of the screen and connect it with, with one of the three other sides of the screen, if it intersects the circle in the middle, don't draw it. But if it doesn't, draw it. So this is a way of drawing a circle almost as a kind of approximation, lots of lines to create that circle. And this got me thinking just about lines and what they could do. So I started thinking about, you know, could I do typography? Like I started putting letters in there, that didn't work. I tried a smiley face, that didn't work very well. Um, but that got me thinking about reflection and I started writing code, and the first code that I wrote was actually wrong. Like, I couldn't figure out how to do reflection. But I was thinking about sort of how light works and how you might reflect lines. And this got me really excited. I started to do all kinds of experiments. And I've been thinking a lot about reflection and light and also refraction and how you might use them in a kind of creative way. So I created this project for um, this music festival in Houston where it's basically using a light table with lots of shapes. So th these are um, just plexiglass shapes that you can rearrange. And then we're projecting a simulation of light. What would it look like if lights were actually bouncing off of those shapes on the side of a building? And it was really fun for me. So I've been just been kind of thinking a lot about light and how you might simulate light, and then to build this tool for people to come and kind of jam and, and experiment with this 
virtual light, for me, was really interesting to sort of see what people make. And I, I'm a really big fan of, of projects that are kind of open-ended and people can bring their creativity to. So here with these shapes, people were drawing and writing messages and, you know, it was quite fun to watch what people do. And I'm, I really like light. I'm thinking a lot about light. And, uh, you know, so mostly just kind of thinking about how can I simulate light and, you know, what would it look like to have light moving around and kind of interacting with these shapes. And that has brought me to, in 2016, I started to do daily sketches. So I'm really getting interested in this idea of coding daily and trying to make something that I can share with the world. So it started with, uh, with actually January 1st. So I was like, oh, I want to do a New Year's card. I always think about New Year's and how can I say Happy New Year's to people. So that was my first sketch was like thinking of, you know, saying Happy New Year's. And then I've just been jamming, thinking about light and reflection. So every day, kind of wake up and usually like I exercise and then I code for an hour and just try to make a sketch for people to share. Um, thinking about, again, this light and reflection, doing lots of studies with typography. So every day just trying to think of something new, like what can I do, you know. To me, it's, it's kind of nice, it's like saying hello. It's like a little hello to everybody. Um, sometimes very simple, like I really am inspired by kind of these simple ideas, like, you know, very graphical ideas. And then, um, you know, just experiments, using the same word over and over again, but just trying to see it in a new way. Um, sometimes very basic. So here, just sim very simple geometry and not a lot of beams of light, but if you just let them bounce a lot, you get these crazy patterns. So for me, it was like this, almost this kind of discovery, you know, just coding and kind of discovering on a daily basis. Um, sometimes it's a little more wild, so these were blobs that light is kind of bouncing in and out of. More geometry studies. And then, you know, some stuff, I have no idea what's going on. I just am playing and kind of experimenting. And it's fun. It's either, there's, you have two things. You either have light or you have a wall. Right? That's all there is. There's walls and there's light. I started to think about refraction. And first experiments with, this was all wrong, but it looked cool. So I shared it with people. Um, but then really thinking, you know, what does it look like if light is refracting on shapes? And that, you know, suggested some interesting ideas. Um, this is refraction through some multiple triangles. Refraction on a blob. The refraction and reflection, so sort of alternating between refraction and reflection. This is a bit of both, ref refraction and reflection. And then I got really, so I, I'm um, super tired. I've been doing these reflection studies for a couple weeks, and, and um, I, get, I really miss color. So I, I got very um, frustrated from just seeing black and white all the time. So, and I'm inspired by uh, this film. So this is an amazing film by a Canadian animator named Norman McLaren called Dots. So I was thinking about this film and I was thinking, you know, how can we code something that looks like this, that has this kind of quality? So I've been experimenting recently, in the last couple days I've been experimenting with blobs. So just making forms that are more like kind of weird and curvy and a little bit amorphous. And how do you light them or how do you shade them so they look interesting? So every day I kind of wake up now and I do blobs. So I was thinking about light before, now I'm thinking about blobs. And I don't know, next week I might be thinking about something else. But it's been really beautiful to kind of every day just wake up and just say hello to people and make a, a sketch every day and just use that as a way of saying hi. The last thing that I've been really excited about and then 
I'm going to pass it to some other people. Um, is that I, so? I teach. I, for many years, I was a professor, and I love when you're teaching as a student and also as a teacher. I love this idea of open office hours. So it's the notion that your professor says, "Come by. We can. T you have a problem. We can talk about it." But it's just saying, "I'm I'm available to talk." And so when the school is not in session, I really miss that. I miss actually just talking to people and just hearing about projects that people are working on. And I find that if people are curious, that curiosity is really infectious. That if they're curious, that I also become curious. So I created this open office hours every week. I take one afternoon, and I say, it, I, on Twitter, Facebook, I say, if you want to talk to me, come find me. And um, so my friend made this thing. So it's like Charlie Brown has this doctor. You know, as I said, the doctor is in. So for me, it's like free media art advice. Um, and it's been really good. I've done it for two weeks now. I'm going to do the third week coming up when I come back from Nantes on, on the weekend. But I found it really amazing to have both people that I know and people that I don't know reach out and just spend time talking to them. And for me, that's like one of the most exciting things I've been doing recently is actually just talking, talking to people. So. I'm now like weekly trying to do this and uh, encourage all of you to come find me for my open office hours. I'm really excited. The last thing to say is, re is really welcome. I'm excited that we can be here jamming, making things with open frameworks, talking about creative code, and, uh, and just if you're not a part of the community, I just want to say uh, welcome. Thank you.